Hey guys, welcome to story time again. Two Griffin here to keep you company for a little while. Now, I <laughs> remember last time I, I kind of lost our planet. I found it again. You know, we obviously. It, uh, it was a planet, it was a moon around a gas giant, which is why I wasn't like looking at it and picking it up at first. But we found it again. And here we here we are. Back at home, we have all the stuff that we. Actually, I'm gonna pick the cotton because you just can't have too much of that. There we go. Just stick that right in there. That in there too. Okay. Now, here's what we've gotta do. We have to scan to find more. We we have to find more florins. Because we have to go and scan their stuff so that we can go on to the next part of the mission. However, the problem with that is that we don't have any fuel for our ship. And without fuel for our ship, we can't go to any other solar systems. So, we need to get fuel for the ship. And how do we get fuel for the ship? We have to mine a moon. Great. How do we mine a moon? We have to actually have a module that allows us to breathe in no atmosphere. And to do that, to make that, we have to make an anvil right here. So we need, oh, we've got almost everything we need. We need eight iron bars. I think I have iron bars somewhere. Oh, uh, look, right there they are. Excellent. All right, so let's go back over here. Let's make an anvil. Here it comes. It's got to be hard work to create an anvil. You know, I've never actually done that myself, but um, can't imagine that's easy. So here we have our anvil. And we're going to put it down... Oh, yeah, why not? Why not right about here? Okay, now the anvil for the breathing EPP, that's what we need. We need six tungsten bars, glass, and living root. And for glass, we need sand. And I don't think we have any sand. So, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna have to go get sand. The rest of the stuff I'm pretty sure we've got. Uh, let's look and see if there are any desert planets in this so No! Screw you, Bunsen! Get out of my face! Alright. Let's look around here and see if there are any desert pla- Oh, look at this. Right there, sand! Let's do it! Let's go get our sand. I love how the ship just flies itself. I can just walk out and walk around. We have all our seeds here, which uh, is good because, uh-oh, nah, we had something turn into mush. We didn't eat it fast enough. We also have a little bit of food in the ship, uh, some of which has turned into mush. Okay, well, we'll just be careful about that. Okay, and now here we are at our sand planet, and we're going to go down here. I don't have any... I don't have any armor. That's something we're gonna have to rectify pretty soon. We have to give, we're gonna have to build ourselves some armor. Okay. Sand. Give it to me. I don't know if I've... Have I even been on this planet yet? I don't think I have. Well. Either way, we're gonna take some sand here. Because we need glass. You know, I was, uh, for a while, and it was one of my favorite jobs ever. I was a glass blower. I think I mentioned this on another story time. I, I actually made, uh, little glass birds. <laughs> and one time, I burned my hand pretty good, and it was an interesting experience. Because burns... Burns hurt different 
differently than any other kind of injury. In general, when you get injured, you get a broken leg or you get a, a cut or a sore or something, you bust your knee, you, uh, maybe you'll, you know, stress or tear a tendon or something. In general, if you don't move that part of your body, you know, if you just leave it right there, if you just rest it, put it up, and don't move it around, then it hurts less. I'm not gonna say it doesn't hurt at all, but it hurts less. Burns are weird because if you get burned pretty good, then that, that injury, it hurts the same no matter what you're doing. Oh, goodness. Is this sand? Okay, it is. I mean, you could sit there and just not move it at all. And it's it's gonna still hurt like, like balls. Um, and I don't know, that's just the nature of a burn injury, I guess. But the way we worked with our glass was we would go and uh, we'd take a rod and it's just what it sounds like. It was just a rod, metal rod. And you go up to the glass furnace, you hit this switch on the floor and the door opens and inside is the, uh, just an absolute view into hell itself. You've got this 2,500 degree furnace in there that is completely melting and just this pool of molten glass and you spin the rod around and in doing that no nope, fuck you Bunsen get on my face I don't like you in doing that you gather up a little bit of a pool of glass or a little bit of a I guess a wad of glass on your rod and then you go and you sit back down in this chair that has kind of these, uh, sort of these, I guess you'd call them guides, uh, you know, where, where you would have normally armrests. You have these guides that you can roll this rod back and forth on with your hand, and you can use tools, graphite and metal tools, uh, to shape the glass. And... I would shape it into a little bird. And the glass that I used was blue. It was blue glass, so I made little blue birds. And I did this over and over and over again. It's my job. Love doing it. But the thing is, you can't just put, you can't just make these birds, these glass birds, and then just sit them out. Because the temperature change as they, were, as they cooled was so extreme that they would crack. They'd break. So what you had to do... There we go. What you had... Oh, I don't need that much. Shit. Uh, just give me... Um, give me 20 glass. What you had to do was... You had to stick them... You had to... Knock them off. Basically, you'd take the little bird, and you'd, um, there's a little blower that would blow this high concentrated, uh, amount of air through a little tube at a stem. You'd, you'd cut the bird down to a stem on the glass, and then you'd blow that to where it became brittle, and you'd knock that off into a little cup, and then you'd pick that bird up with tongs and stick it in an oven. And overnight, the oven would slowly move down to cooler and cooler temperatures to the point... <coughs> pardon me. To the point where they were cooled off. Slowly. Wait, I just made an anvil. I didn't need to make an anvil. <laughs> Shit. I already have an anvil. I need to make this. Okay. Tungsten bar. Glass, I have plenty. I, I can't believe I made another anvil. 
I, I, I got distracted by my, my bird story. Okay, tungsten bar and a living root. Well, I have living roots over here. Uh, and I have tungsten here too. So, where's my living root? It's, there it is. Grab that. Okay. Uh, I need a tungsten, oh god, I made another, made another anvil. How many tungsten bars do I need? Uh, wait a minute. No, I don't. I need, uh, six tungsten bars. Okay, we can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Now we should be able to make our breathing EPP. We can. There it goes. You can also use, uh, you, you can also enhance EPPs with augments. Now, I think the Enviro Protection Pack, do, do, do I have, oh, it's on me right now. Now, this thing, you can upgrade this thing over time, and I don't have to wear it all the time, because I'm on a plant with oxygen, so I can just be a bird. But, uh, when I go to a moon, I gotta wear that, because that will let me breathe. Uh, which we're gonna go to right now, because... Oh... God, let me just... Let me put my... My extra anvil... God... Can't believe I made another anvil. Oh, man. Anyway, I have just made a glass bird, and... The glass bird is there. Screw you, Bunsen! Fuck off! Alright, we're going to a moon, guys. What we're doing right now, and that moon looks fine to me. I just made a glass bird, and... Of course... You know, the glass is still... By the time I'm done with it, because it's... You know, still like a liquid, right? It's still cooling off, and they usually were when, by the time you knock them into the little cup, and so this glass, uh, th this glass bird is still, it's still got a core, you can see it, it, you know, it's glowing orange in the core, and I knocked the bird off, I just tapped my rod like I usually do, onto the little glass cup, but I did it a little bit carelessly, and the glass bird bounced off the cup and it fell out and it bounced off the table and did this perfect arc right in front of me and the first thing my brain did was say reach out and catch it and I did I reached out and I caught with my hand that glowing hot glass bird now put on our put on our little pack here so we can breathe down there excellent and now we're going down we're gonna mine minerals down here there we go and we're gonna keep moving and notice the gravity is smaller oh yeah okay we do have we do have dirt good very good okay whoa moons are different than everything else uh and, uh, there's a thing that's gonna happen here pretty quick. Sky, I'm detecting entities attracted by the moon's, uh, Echorus uh, deposits. Now, this guy I call Mr. Grabby Hands. Uh, it's pretty much a purple ghost-like thing. You can't kill him. You can't do anything to him. Uh, you just gotta stay ahead of him. And you gotta make sure you don't get stuck somewhere. Or he will come and get you, and if he does, it's instant death. So, we, we can't see him right now. I'll show him to you before I go back up to the ship. But for right now, we're just going to try to stay ahead of him and get all of the fuel we can get. Anyway, I reached out and I grabbed that red-hot bird with my hand. 
And it was funny, before I felt any pain whatsoever, it was really weird because my uh, my brain, something about it told me that something was wrong. Uh, my brain just said, Some, you done goofed. It didn't give me any pain. I, I, I didn't feel that yet. And, oh no! Oh boy, uh, okay, good. Uh, just, we, we want out of that crater. We don't want to be in a crater. Eh, no. So, I'm sitting there, and my brain is saying, Oh my god, you've just done something disastrous to your own ass. And I start feeling... Actually, at first it felt cold. It, at first it felt freezing cold. And then the pain set in, and I could start feeling the, uh, the heat. Now this happened only over like a second or two. And the first thing I did was try to drop, I, I turned my hand over to drop the bird, but it was so hot, it had burned to my skin, and it stuck to my hand. I, I, I actually had to shake it off of my hand, some skin came off of it as well. Oh god, this is a bad time to need food. Oh man. Real bad time to need food. No, give me... Okay, just give me something. Anything fast. Okay, that'll work. Oh, I need the dirt. I gotta have my dirt back. Oh, Jesus, I'm, I may... We may see Mr. Grabby Hands here pretty soon. Okay. Uh, okay, maybe not. Maybe I'm getting away from him. Maybe I'm still staying ahead of him. Well, not now. If I'm gonna try and get this, I'm definitely not gonna stay ahead of him. He's gonna come and get me. Uh, okay. So, I dropped that bird, uh, and I had to shake it off of my hand. And, uh, after that, well, that's when the real pain kicked in. I, I got a few weeks off of work for that, uh, because it just, um... It was a... I couldn't use my hand. I mean, even with bandages on it, it, uh... It really hurt a lot. And... It was one of those things where... You know, I, I, I realized that... The pain of a burn injury... It just... Doesn't go away. You can sit there and you can... Not move your hand. You can... You know, not aggravate it in any way. You can just rest it. And it still just continues to be this throbbing, massive pain, no matter what you do. And, um, oh dear, oh, this is not, this is not good at all. This is not good. Okay, there we go, there we go, we're okay. Okay. Uh, and it just, I don't know if any of you guys out there have ever had... A burn injury. Oh, Jesus. But, um... Yeah, they just... It's a different kind of pain. It just doesn't quit. It doesn't stop. It just sits there and hurts. No matter, um... No matter what you're doing. And, uh, it's just... It's weird. I got... Obviously, I mean... I healed from that. And, uh, I never, uh... Never... Caught another bird again. I never, uh, I never burned myself with glass again after that. That was the only time I, uh, I ever did it. Uh, but, um, and I'm glad that's the only time I ever did it because I, I really did not want to do that anymore to myself. Um, oh boy, am I gonna get across this? I am not. Oh dear. All right, let's see if we can get out of here. Okay, I think we can. I think we can. I think we can. I think we did. All right. We made it. I don't know if I've gone around all the way or not. Uh, well, I'm gonna try and get this stuff. We may see Mr. Grabby Hands here. 
Uh, and I, I, if we do, that's fine because I will. Sh I want to show him to you. He's pretty slow, which is good. The more of the stuff you get, uh, the faster he goes. But you got to get. You, you have to have a whole lot before he goes faster than you can go. So that's that's a good thing, I think. Oh boy. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm not seeing any places that I've dug already, so I. I don't think, unless that, oh, wait, I'm maybe seeing places that I have dug already. All right, I think I've already gone around this planet. So, let's sit here and let's wait for Mr. Grabby Hands so you guys can see Mr. Grabby Hands. Where are you, dude? Come on, man. Now you're here somewhere. You're gonna, oh, there you are. There you are. What's up, Mr. Grabby Hands? How you doing? Yeah, he's slow, but he will chase you. So you gotta keep ahead of him when you're mining for fuel. So anyway, we just got fuel. And what you do is you go over here, you say, fuck you, Bunsen. And we're gonna put the fuel in the engine. Bonk. Boom. Now we don't have a lot. It's not a whole lot. But it's enough to get another to another solar system, I believe. Uh, well, actually, let's see. Let's just let's just see. Let me take off this backpack. I'm sure this thing this looks heavy to me. So we're just gonna take that off there, and we're gonna see where we can go. We can go to another gentle star, which is right here, and we have oh, uh, there's a. Uh, caverns, no breathable, that's a moon. Okay, do we have jungle? Because Lauren's love to, no, nothing there. Uh, oh, it's a forest. Florins do love to live in forests. You know, I'm not seeing a lot of, ah, let's go back and what's here? Do we have any more jungles and, okay, there's a forest, that's good. There's, um, another forest, also good. Uh, there is... Okay. I think that's a jungle. Or, a, it's either a jungle or a forest. It's got a lot of flora. And there's another, you know what? I think we're gonna go to this system next. But, hey, before I do that, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna actually bookmark... Our little, that's our home. We're gonna say home. Bookmark our home. There we go. Now, we won't get lost in the universe. And also there's something else that I wanna buy before we scoot. And I'm gonna do that in the next episode. You'll get to see what it is and you'll get to see it is really, really, really useful. So we're gonna do that later. Hang on a second. Uh, it's not in here. There is... Aha! A place... I want to put this teleporter core in there. Alright. Because we're going to have a big time use for that coming up here pretty soon. And we'll get to... I'll show you that in the next episode. For now, I'm going to take off, guys. Hope you enjoyed story time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed... The stuff that I'm doing and the, the stories that I'm telling you, even though they're not always happy, sometimes, um, you know, stories aren't always happy, but they can have happy endings, even if they're kind of tragic. Um, but that's what this show is about, stories. So, let me know if, uh, in the comments, you know, have you guys ever, you, had, you ever had a burn injury? You ever experienced what a burn pain is like? Have you ever worked with glass? Let me know. I'd love to read your stories. I will see you guys very soon. And until then, take care.